Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever it is that you're joining us. My name is Rafaela de la Vega, and I'm a business development advisor here at WSET Americas. I'm very excited today to be sharing this virtual stage with Mavi Vasquez, a really good friend and someone I got to enjoy some mezcal with earlier this year. And before I go ahead and introduce her to everyone, um, just some housekeeping rules. So on the bottom of your screen, you should have a nice little chat box. Please go ahead, tell us where you're joining us from. If you have any comments, uh, feel free to give us some love throughout the presentation. We've got some good stuff prepared for y'all. Uh, Q&A box at the bottom for any questions. We'll get about 10 minutes at the end to answer those. Um, and of course, this is gonna be recorded as always. So if you need to take a pause, feel free to go to our YouTube page at the end of this week and be able to watch it then. All right, so real quick on, on Mavi before I give it over to her to, to walk us through some mezcal. Um, she is a co-founder and CEO of Agavache, Agave specialist, educator, and consultant, helping a lot of different mezcal mezcaleries, um, just you know, working with their products. And then she has also achieved her level three in spirits through WSET. She's also certified judge and taster, um, helping out with tasting competitions worldwide. And now she is actually based in Norway, um, just moved over from Mexico City recently. So she's definitely getting a, a different taste of, of the world of spirits over there. So now I'm going to pass it over to Mavi to go ahead and, and give us a little bit more about herself and walk us through Mezcal. Take it away, Mavi. Oh, yeah. Hi, hello. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, my name is Mavi Vasquez, and right now I am in the world northernmost whiskey distillery. But today I'm going to tell you about my favorite spirit, Mezcal. We will see the general characteristic, characteristics of the spirit, how to identify them in a label, and the future challenge of the industry with its increasing popularity. So we will start first, what, what is mezcal? <clears throat> so mezcal is a spirit that must be made 100% from agave, and it must be produced within the Mexican territory protected by the designation of origin. Its name comes from Mezcali, a word from our ancient Nahuatl language. Medal means maguey, and its Cali means cook. So together mean maguey cocido. Maguey and agave are the same. Just maguey is the common name and agave uh, the scientific name. About the origin of these agave spirits, there are three theories. One says that pre Hispanic culture discovered the distillation process 200 years, uh, 2000 years before Christ. From this point of view, mezcal had a ritual use because for the Mesoamerican civilizations, the maguey uh, was a sacred plant. Another theory proposes that the steel and the distillation techniques were introduced by Philippines whom came along with the commercial trade with Asia in late 16th century. And the most widely accepted theory is that the Spanish conquerors brought with them the Arab Alambic to make profit from the pulque. <clears throat> Whichever had been the origin, the influence from the three cultures uh, has remained part of the spirit until now. Um, both through the native, native knowledge of the plant, its farming, and the traditional techniques used to produce mezcal. But what makes mezcal different to other spirits? There are three elements. Raw material, which is agave, the production process that is still using artisanal techniques from the 16th century and natural fermentation, and that it has a designation of origin or geographical indication registered with the World Intellectual Property Organization. This marks the Mexican state where mezcal can be produced. Here, it's important to point out that before its creation, mezcal was a generic name for any agave spirit in Mexico. And in line with this concept, mezcal exists before tequila. 
<clears throat> so let's start with that. Well, <clears throat> this plant is native from Mexico. It flourished 11 million years ago and 1000 years ago, it was domesticated. For our ancestors, agave was a sacred plant because they benefit from all its power where they obtain it, food, textiles, and building materials. It adapts to different climates and it thrives in extreme conditions. For those reasons, agave grows all around Mexico, territory, and spreads to the United States and Central America. From the 2, 000, uh, 220 existing agave species, 150 are located in Mexico and 116 are endemic. <clears throat> to produce some type of agave spirit, 40 of them can be used, but 28 species are the most frequently distilled. Um, referring to the plant characteristics, the main central body of the plant is covered with uh, <clears throat> spiky leaves, which are called pencas. When the plant reaches maturity, it grows a spike out of the center. This is called quiote, and it uses all the stored energy to power a single spectacular flowering event that happens only one time before the plant dies. Flowers are pollinated and produce a large number of seeds that can be spread to the local environment. The other method of reproduction is by, uh, by side shoots. If they are located next to the base of the plant, are called offsets or hijuelos. If they are part of the inflorescence, they are called bulbils. They are essentially a, a small genetically identical version of the original plant. Once these side shoots have reached a particular size, they can be detached and replanted. Not all the agave species develop clones, and the only way to reproduce them is by seed. <clears throat> all agaves are similar, uh, share similar uh, physical characteristics and communal aromas. Nevertheless, there are distinct between them. <clears throat> Um, some of them are taller or wider. The pencas change in shape, color, and alignment of the tones. And probably the most important issue for mezcal productions, some of them have better sugar yield than others. Another, uh, <clears throat> another similarity between them is that all the species must grow for several years before are mature and ready to harvest. But depending on the species, these plants can take anywhere between five to 30 years to reach maturity. Then they either bloom and pass on as a seed or they are harvested and transmuted into spirit. Here uh, in the image, there are the most commonly agaves used uh, to produce mezcal. They are identified with their scientific name because the common name can change from one community to another but the corresponding illustration represents the name which they are known by traditional producers. A mezcal label can have the scientific name, the common name, or both. Um, agave angustifolia or maguey espadin is the most used agave produced mezcal because it is cultivated with better sugar deal and only takes five to six years to reach maturity. In 2021, 90% of the mezcal production was made with this agave, excluding the agave tequilana hueve, which is also widely cultivated. The rest of the agaves are wild or semi-wild. Wild agaves or agave silvestres, as we call them in Spanish, are plants that self-seed and grow to maturity in faraway locations without human intervention. Semi-wild agaves are plants that grow from seed at a nursery and afterwards are transplanted to locations where they usually grow as part of the ecosystem. These agaves take more years to mature. 
Son of them as agave marmorata or magai pestate can take nearly 30 years. So the production of mezcal with these agaves is limited. Besides, these agaves usually have lower sugar yield. Ah, production process. As any spirit, mezcal production starts with the preparation of the raw material to expose the carbohydrates, followed by the fermentation, where these convert these carbohydrates into alcohol. Afterwards, distillation takes place to increase the alcohol content and select the congeners that will be in the spirit. The process ends with the bottling of the new uh, make spirit or continues with some post distillation steps such as aging. In mezcal production, the techniques and the equipment chosen by producers are influenced by the culture and the knowledge inherited rather than economic factors. So generally, the decisions taken lead to a process with a low efficiency and performance, which takes weeks, even months to be completed and involves exhausting human work. But they also have an impact in the flavor and quality of the products. And a very important aspect, they keep with the uniqueness of the spirit given by the complex issue between history, social factors, and nature itself. Agave uh, is harvested by hand. All the leaves are removed and the solid body of the plant that remains, which is called piñas, is the material that will be cooked. They need to be cooked to convert their complex carbohydrates, called fructans, into fermentable sugar. The most conventional and oldest method used is fire pits. A brick steam oven or pressurized steam oven also can be used, but they are more common in tequila. After the cooking, the piñas are crushed. Um, <clears throat> after the cooking, the piñas are crushed to extract the sugars. The piña structure is hard and fibrous, and producers need to help the yeast open up the sugars to them. Crushing can be done by hand with mullets or using a taona or mechanized meal. Taona is a shallow circular stone trough and a large circular crushing stone that rotates around the center point of the trough. Usually, the stones are harnessed to an animal such as donkey or a horse. When the sugar liquid has been extracted, is moved together with piñas fibers into uh, good containers to begin the fermentation. Traditional fermentation relies on ambient yeast and takes at least four days to complete, with some taking weeks. Bacteria also play a role in this traditional fermentation. Because of the active work of this microorganism for several days, the alcoholic liquid develops a complex array of aromas. For distillation, uh, producers can choose from a diverse range of different steel types, including small clay pot steels, uh, larger but simple pot steels, and column steel. Clay steels are similar to the Asian steel type, and pot steels are like the European steel type as the Alambic uh, Charante. Both are the most frequently steels used in the production of mezcal. Mm, when the distillation is finished, the new make spirit can be bottled as an aged spirit, which is called joven or white, or it can be matured in glass vessels for more than 12 months, or it can be aged in wood vessels. If it is aged from two to 12 months in wood, it's dis um, designated as reposado. If, uh, if it is aged more than 12 months, it is añejo. These are the classes of mezcal. The other two classes are distilled wheat, 
uh, that is a mezcal that has been redistilled with flavoring ingredients and avocado con or infused with. That is a mezcal that has been flavored by maceration. The young mezcal is the traditional one and also offers um, highly expressive agave aromas. So it represents almost the 90% of the production for local markets and exports. Besides the classes, there are mezcal categories. These are in function of the equipment used during the production process. This differentiation tries to give a recognition of the traditional and historic practices. Ancestral mezcal is the category with less mechanized equipment and more human force employed. It has a great intangible value, although its production is not efficient. So it only represents the 0.6% of the total production of mezcal. Artisanal mezcal is almost the 90% of the production. And mezcal without last name is produced in a high efficiency process with technological improvements resulting in a generic spirit which lacks of the real characteristics of mezcal and it's currently 90% uh, of the industry. Designation of origin or the denomination de origen um, for a spirit distilled from agave to be uh, labeled as mezcal, it must be produced within the region authorized by the designation of origin. There are nine uh, states which are legally part of it. Oaxaca, Michoacán, Guerrero, San Luis Potosí, Tamaulipas, eh, Zacatecas, Puebla, Durango, and Guanajuato. And there are other four Mexican states that have eh, requested to join it. In this image, you can see that the states have been added in different years. And the law protects some areas of the states. Not all the states municipalities are under protection. You can also see the percent of mezcal production per state. Oaxaca is the main producer with 85% um, um, of the total production. Producers have mastered the craft of making mezcal. And it is fairly uh, safe to say that outside Mexico, the majority of the mezcal that you will find in the market come from this state. Nevertheless, if you have the opportunity to try a mezcal from another state, give it a chance because it will be different. Every region has its own native agave and production technique. Drinking mezcales from different origins will help you expand your taste and knowledge of mezcal. Um, <clears throat> we have reviewed some important aspects of mezcal that you should verify are indicated on the label, such as if it is 100% agave, the name of agave or maguey, the process through which it has been done, artisanal, ancestral, or industrialized, the class of mezcal, joven, reposado, añejo, avocado, destilado con o madurado, and the state where it comes from. This information is required by law as well as the alcohol by volume, uh, millimeters uh, content, and the lot number. It provides an idea of the characteristics to expect, such as the color, intensity, texture, maybe a vague notion of the aromas, but it is not a guarantee of quality. To access quality, you should taste it. In addition to this mandatory information, some brands and voluntary add voluntary information that helps to recognize and appreciate the value and diversity of the spirit. Some examples of this extra uh, data are the name of the producer, and the age of the harvested agave, the exact location of the production, or the technical characteristics of the production process. 
The aim is to give recognition to the producers or maestros mezcaleros, their communities, and the intense labor and skill that goes into making this spirit. So if you choose a mezcal with meticulous information placed on the label, there is a better chance of succeeding in your purchase. Usually, the brands that are transparent about these matters are related to good mezcales. Mexico, Mexico is a large country with deserts, forests, and rainforests. The climate, the soil, and the biodiversity change from the north to the south of the country, from the valleys to the mountains and the coasts. In the same way, the history, traditions, costumes, and gastronomy are very diverse. Even between regions of the same state, they have variations. Regarding mezcal production, we should aware that the environment, the agaves, the yeast, and the water are not the same in every region, and they will shape the resulting spirit as they shape the historical taste of the inhabitants. Historical taste is how the locals, the original consumers, understand and value the characteristics of their mezcales. Through this, the persistent use of ancient equipment and practices make sense. The reasons behind the survival of these practices and methods are the culture and the heritage that producers strive to maintain. Their mezcales represent the regional identity. Many of the small distilleries make mezcal uh, because it is part of their inherited knowledge rather, uh, rather than for economic profit. There are many natural factors and human choices that impact the production process and the style of the final product. It is almost impossible to find two identical mezcales if they are not from the same batch. But all the factors contribute with the uniqueness and complexity of the spirit. And with the end, uh, the trends and future challenge of the industry. The popularity of mezcal has had a constantly increasing since at least 14 years. In accordance with the latest reports of the Mezcal Council, from 2020 to 2021, the production increased in 3.2%. The exports increased 72.2%. Um, and the value of the category grows to $440 million. Of dollars. The alcohol e-commerce uh, platform Drizzly has reported a 600% percent year on year increase in these mezcal sales. These days, mezcal has moved on from being known as the smoky coaxing of tequila to have a proper recognition of its own characteristics. The rising mezcal popularity has had a positive impact, mainly in the economic side of the industry. It generates uh, 23,000 of direct jobs and benefits to 70,000 families. It has contributed to reduce immigration to the United States because now making mezcal is a viable economic option with better pay and less dangerous than illegal work. As a consequence of this growing interest on mezcal, more entrepreneurs and international spirit companies want to be part of this profitable business, and that's fine. But this rise on demand creates pressure on the supply of agave and the producer's way to life. The industry faces many challenges, in particular, maintaining a sustainable supply of agave. Agave takes so many years to reach maturity that the cultivated agaves are not enough. And currently, the population of wild agaves has been reduced. Some species may disappear completely. Now, more than ever, Mezcal must take steps to preserve its future and pay attention in these crucial aspects. Keeping the spirit's quality, 
preserving the tradition in the production process and good practices, recycling and reusing the bad products, safeguarding the environment, developing social and ecological strategies in balance with commercial demand, um, and fair trade. That is not just about paying a fair price, but also increasing the quality of life of the producers and their community. Thankfully, some brands um, concerned for the future of their products, the agave and the planet are taking action, actions. So my suggestion is to look for them and support the real people behind the liquid. Don't believe just in the stickers of ours on the label, but be a responsible consumer who seeks further information about the brand's history and practices, especially from those who don't have any. At the end, you have the most important say in all of this with every purchase and every seat. So this has been an introduction to understand the complexity of mezcal. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, Mabi. I appreciate you taking the time to walk us through a little bit more regarding Mezcal. Um, I know that there have been quite a few questions popping up, so I want to make sure we've got, we've got some time for this. We'll probably go over a little bit in time. Hope that's okay for everyone. Um, one of the questions that we have is um, how to drink Mezcal, room temperature, cooled with salt and chili. Yeah. How, no, how uh, you drink no. <laughs> yeah, room temperature uh, without anything, just the just the liquid without lemon, without orange, without salt. If you want to really understand the beverage, you should try it alone without anything. If you are in a party with your friends, okay, mm -hmm. share it and with other things, but. The best way is only the, the liquid. <laughs> On its own, nice. Um, another question regarding kind of the, the actual drinking part. So how many calories does mezcal have and is it recommended with a low calorie diet? I'm not sure how many calories it has. I, I know that, it, yeah, I know that it's low in calories, I think it's 40 calories, but I'm not sure. I should check it. Sweet. And if you recommend it for a diet, well, maybe it's better than a cocktail, <laughs> but, but it has sugar too. Yeah. Well, it's not has sugar, it has alcohol. <laughs> Um, okay, so another question we've got is with production focused on ancestral and artesanal, um, which is inherently small, oh yeah, which is inherently small production and limited access to markets, what percent of exports do these mezcals make up? What is the change we can find these, what is the chance we can find these mezcals outside of Mexico versus yeah. more commercial brands? What's your yeah. thought on that? Uh, artisanal is pretty easy. Almost the 90% of the production and the exports are artisanal mezcal. Ancestral mezcal, um, it's a very low production and it's easier to find it in Mexico. But there are some brands that um, they have our ancestral uh, mezcalets outside. Um, they usually they have a high price, but I think it values that. And, and if you find one in the market, you should try it. Yeah, and I think um, there have been quite a few specialist stores, at least, and, and this is just speaking of the US, right? But I know like there's one in San Francisco that is so focused on mezcal and tequila and you can find like such awesome brands there um so it might be just like digging around a little bit further um, i would recommend that um is there any encouragement to use wider variety of agave uh encourage what can you repeat it please so is there any encouragement to use a wider variety of agave um 
the second part to us is recently heard a passing comment about agave and bats. What's the story here? So I think it's kind of the question is blending agave varieties, if I'm reading that correctly. Uh, yes, you can do a, a blending. It's the it's a common practice in, in mezcal production and it's called ensemble. But the blending is uh, when the agave is cooked inside of the fire pit, inside of the oven, they mix the agave. Um, when they finish the product, they have all the agaves mixing from the cooking process from the beginning. So that is the commune practice. And salt blending, that it's if you want to blend mezcal from one variety in by the end, like a post distillation process, mm -hmm. is, is not a commune practice. And it's not part of the tradition. So yes, some brands uh, do it because they have a lot of demand. But uh, the tradition is mixing from the beginning in the cooking process. Gotcha. And I actually, I just saw a, a question pop up in the chat that I think is, is a fun one. Can you explain how mezcal de pechuga is made? Oh yeah, Me mezcal de pechuga, it's a, a mezcal red stillet with, um, with a recipe. Sometimes they add uh, turkey or a chicken breast and they um, hold the, the, the breast in, uh, in, the, in the head of the, the, of the steel and all the vapors pass through them. So, but yes, they add the meat, but usually, well not usually, always they add another ingredients like fruits, species, um, herbs, they add um, their products, local products, and they make a kind of recipe. And uh, they, they add the flavor. Pechuga, the meat, it's part of that tradition, but they don't really add flavors like the, the rest of the ingredients. But yeah, it, it's a traditional uh, mezcal for celebrations, usually. <laughs> Um, and then the uh, fun question that I think is something that you see probably very commonly, um, what makes mezcal so different from tequila? Well, <laughs> tequila can use only tequila and agave and mezcal can use 40 different agaves. Uh, the region, um, um, Tequila designation of origin, uh, they have other states that mix than mezcal designation of origin. They share some states, for example, uh, Guanajuato, uh, Zacatecas, Tamaulipas, they have tequila designation of origin and mezcal designation of origin in different municipalities. But yeah, it's agave, the designation of origin and the process. Usually, well, not usually, tequila, it's a big industry with a high demand. So they use equipment uh, with more um, efficient to get more, su more sugar and more alcohol by the end. So the process, it's a more technified process than mezcal. Awesome. And we'll just end with one, one more question. Um, so going back to kind of how to drink the mezcal, um, do salts add to the experience? I recently tried them with different agave salts, some made of, of worm, um, and it did seem to augment different flavors, but I'm not sure it was a trick of the mind, if it was a trick of the mind. What are your with thoughts? The on, yeah, with the, the worm and the little salts, with the crushed maguey. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think, or in my experience, when I try a mezcal with a, a salt and the warm salt, I think I taste more 
about a kind of metallic notes with the mezcal. I find more metallic notes in the beverage because it, I think the salt and the water influence the, the flavor of the mezcal. And yeah, maybe they're pro, uh, trying with different salts and maybe you can have a different experience with the mezcal, yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome, great. Well, I am seeing the chat still have a couple questions come in, um, but we will have to wrap up because we're a little bit over time, but I do wanna take the time to appreciate everyone for hopping in, um, whether it was early in the morning or later in the evening, thank you so much. Um, what we will do is, you know, we have her uh, email that was shared earlier. Um, we'll make sure to share that again or her Instagram um, so that y'all can connect with Mavi and, and ask her some more questions regarding Mescal. I'm sure she'd be more than happy to, to answer more of your okay. questions, but thank you so much, Mavi, for, for walking us through this. This was awesome. Thank you for it. the attention. Yeah, and stay warm. Stay warm out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Have a lovely rest of your week. Bye. Bye.